Thanks for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. Two weeks ago, we discussed the upcoming Ezekiel War, a Russian-Iranian invasion. I believe it will occur before the tribulation begins. Today, we will answer this question. What is the purpose of the Ezekiel War, also called the War of Gog and Magog, from the point of view of God? First, let's listen to the invasion in Ezekiel chapter 38. Troops will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land of Israel like a cloud. These troops will be defeated by God on the mountains of Israel. But what is the purpose of this war? God himself says, Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord." The Great Harvest. Welcome to Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. The world has entered into a time of paradigm shift when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Signs and wonders, miracles and healings attest to this truth. It is the time of the coming of the Lord. Join Teresa as we discuss how to prepare our hearts and loved ones in understanding the end of the age. I'm Teresa Garcia, and I want to thank you for tuning in again this week. We are in a series entitled Timeline to the End of Time, and we are working with the timeline in the book From the Hidden on page 34. Heavenly Father, the prophet Jeremiah said this, the anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. And we expect to understand the things that are going to happen in our times and cooperate with your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's go back to page 34 and put our chart back on the screen again. And we have established the fact that September 11, 1999 began the time of the final judgment of the nations, after which there was the Iraqi War of 2003. And then in the future, we will expect the destruction of Damascus, followed by the Ezekiel War. And then after that, the church becomes glorious and unified and brings in the great harvest at the end of the age. And today we're going to talk about the spiritual climate uh, in the world after the Ezekiel War. But before we do that, we're going to talk about the physical climate for just a minute, uh, what has happened to our weather. And I personally realized that we were in end time weather patterns actually in the year 2004. And in that year I was in Florida, I actually uh, purchased this picture of four hurricanes because what happened is they had four hurricanes in Florida in six weeks. First they had Hurricane Charlie, then Francis, then Ivan, then Jean, and actually uh, Jeb Bush was known as the hurricane governor because he was there on the scene and because his brother was the president, he got a lot of financial help and got Florida all straightened out. That was uh, August and September, then December 26th that year. Who can forget the great 9.2 uh, magnitude earthquake in Indonesia followed by the dreadful tsunami that killed so many people. And then the very next uh, August, the greatest tr uh, climate tragedy in the history of the United States, Hurricane Katrina. And so in those days, then I understood that we were probably not going to have normal weather until the Lord returns. Now I have, uh, back to 1904, the National Geographic global warning. And this just illustrates that the world doesn't get it. It says, projections for the 21st century, fewer cold and frost days over nearly all the planet's land areas 
the fastest climate warming in the past 10,000 years. Of course, we all know that the American Northeast has just had their coldest uh, winter on record. So we can't trust the news to tell us what's happening in the weather. But I have another source I thought you might be interested in. I'm going to take you back to an incident that happened in Shandong, China in the year 1995. Now what happened is a group of Christians meeting in a secret house church meeting, that's how they have to meet over there, decided that they were going to uh, tape, audio tape their meeting. And so they were praying in the spirit and when they played it back after the meeting, they were shocked. They didn't have on tape what they had been singing, but rather they heard someone singing in Mandarin Chinese accompanied by musical instruments. They concluded it must have been angels. And by the way, uh, you can actually go online, just put in your search engine, Shandong Miracle, and hear these uh, uh, angels singing in Chinese. But anyway, our question today is what happened to the weather? And I believe they answered the question. Let's listen. The famine is becoming more and more critical. There are more and more earthquakes. The situation is becoming more and more sinister. People are fighting against each other, nation against nation. Disasters are more and more severe. The end is near. The revelation of love has been manifested. Rise up, rise up, rescue souls. The end is near. Rise up, rise up, rescue souls. The whole environment is deteriorating. Disasters are more and more severe. People's hearts are wicked, and they do not worship the true God. Disasters are more and more severe. Floods and droughts are more and more frequent. There is more and more sexual sin and incurable diseases. Disasters are more and more severe. The climates are becoming more and more abnormal. The earth is more and more restless. The skies have been broken. The atmosphere is distorted. Disasters are more and more severe. The end is near. The revelation of love has been manifested. Rise up, rise up, rescue souls. The end is near. Rise up, rise up, rescue souls. And so that is the heart of God, ladies and gentlemen, rescue souls. And I know that many of you who are watching, that's your heart's desire, likewise my own. And so we are going to have an unprecedented opportunity to rescue souls. I'm going to take you into the time of the Ezekiel War in the future, and uh, then we will explain how we will rescue souls. Uh, I write on page 78, use your own imagination and project yourself into the days of the Ezekiel War. We are alarmed to see Russian troops moving into position again. An alliance will coalesce against Israel, Russia, Iran, Turkey, Ethiopia, Libya. It has to happen because God spoke it through Ezekiel. Television newsmen will bring us updates around the clock. No doubt there will be prayer meetings around the clock. And then suddenly the attack. Paratroopers descend on the mountains of Israel covering the land like a cloud. Flashback to Gideon with 300 men defeating the Midianites. Could the Bible be true? Could this really be? And then earthquake, sword, fire, and brimstone. God reigns. He really is in control. Oh, praise him forevermore. Nations, yes, nations will come to the Lord. This will be the great harvest for which we have waited so long. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the land as the water covers the seas, and we will be right in the middle of it. Now, in the next paragraph, I outline our exciting role. 
Christians open their Bibles to Ezekiel 38 and read fast and furiously. Someone knocks at your door. The phone rings. The same question from every neighbor, every friend. You're a Christian, aren't you? What's happening? Saints of God, learn it now so we will be prepared. We must respond rightly. We will tell them, this is only the beginning. God is judging the nations. Repent and be saved. Accept Jesus and escape the wrath to come. Now, let's go to the Word of God and look more closely at those harvest verses. First of all, in Ezekiel 38, verse 23. God says, Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, then they shall know that I am the Lord. So that's exciting. They will know that he is Lord. They will have a knowing. Uh, Ezekiel 39 now. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name anymore. Then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Again, when he gives his favor to Israel, it will show Israel he is God, and then the nations will recognize the God of Israel. And then in three successive verses, chapter 39, 21 through 23, verse 21, God says, I will set my glory among the nations. All the nations shall see my judgment, which I have executed, and my hand, which I have laid on them. And God will uh, show this to the whole world, no doubt, by satellite TV. When what we're seeing on TV lines up with the Word of God, this is a very powerful tool to win the lost. Verse 22, So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. So they won't yet know Jesus as Messiah, but they will turn back as a nation. They're very secular today to Jehovah. And verse 23, The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they were unfaithful to me. Therefore I hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies, and they all fell by the sword. And so verse 23, Jehovah tells us that, this, uh, that the Gentiles will then think like this. Well, maybe they really are God's chosen people. I mean, look, it looks obviously God intervened on their behalf. And then uh, many uh, Muslims will come to the Lord also at that time. So this will be an unprecedented opportunity to bring in the harvest. The Lord spoke it like this to one of his prophets. He said, for 2,000 years, my people have been taking the oranges off the bottom of the tree, but I'm going to shake the whole tree. And that's what's going to happen as we bring in the harvest. Now, uh, after that then, uh, the world is going to start working on the peace treaty of Daniel 927. Sometimes it takes a while for a peace treaty to get written. Uh, but we are going to be focusing on the glory. Let's listen to some uh, verses in Romans 13 and remember that faith works by love and our motivation in winning the lost is by love. Paul writes, And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of the sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You've probably heard stories uh, of believers' voices, faces literally shining with the glory of God. Uh, we will be going close to being without spot or wrinkle as we proceed closer to the time of the rapture. And here's some verses that are often quoted, which I believe well represent the times we are living in right now. Arise, shine, for your light has come, 
and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Now we're going to go to Dr. Gary Wood's book, A Place Called Heaven, which he wrote to chronicle his visit to heaven when he was a teenager in the 1960s. But the Lord started talk to, talking to him about the end of the age. And he told him there would be three characteristics of the end of the age. Jesus commissioned me to make him real to the people of this earth. He said there would be three things that would mark his soon return. One, a spirit of restoration. Two, a spirit of prayer. And three, an outburst of miracles. So first of all, we're going to talk about a spirit of restoration. In our ministry, most of our prayer calls are for healing, usually physical healing. But second, even more than calls about finances, are calls for restoration. Many of them are mothers and grandmothers wanting to be restored to their children and grandchildren or wanting their children and grandchildren to be restored to God. Uh, many others, other relatives calling, and there is a hunger in the heart of believers to see their families coming into the kingdom. And God is going to answer these prayers. I would just urge you at this time, never give up, never talk negatively about your unsaved loved ones. Just keep sowing seed. In fact, the Old Testament closes with a spirit of restoration, and the New Testament opens with a spirit of restoration. Let's listen. Malachi 4. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Luke chapter 1. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. He will also go before him, Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. We are talking today about uh, what's going to happen at the end of the age. First, a spirit of restoration, then an, uh, uh, a spirit of prayer, and then an outburst of miracles. So let's listen to some words on prayer. Gary Wood said, I got down on my knees and began to pray. I said, Lord Jesus, I want all the power that is available to me from heaven to earth except speaking in tongues. He said, have you ever tried to tell God, the creator, the knower of all things, your religious doctrine? Do you think he cares? God is not impressed by the fact that you are a Southern Baptist Methodist Church of God, Lutheran Catholic or whatever. God sees you as saved or not saved. He said, I yielded to the Holy Spirit, allowing him to baptize me, and I was hungry no more. He said, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is, by faith, ask the Lord to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, and he will. He is a perfect gentleman and will not force you into anything. So now we're going to talk about miracles. And uh, this might be a little hard for some of you to believe, but this is what he saw in heaven. We walked into a long building, much like a storage building. I was caught off guard by what I saw hanging from the walls. There were rows of legs, rows of arms, cubicles with hair and eyeballs of various colors, 
Every part of one's anatomy was in this room. And so what he saw is that God has available to you and to me whatever we need for our healing. He continues, I could see the prayers of the saints shoot up like arrows toward heaven. Angels would receive the prayers and bring them into the throne room of God. God would then grant the prayer request and the angel would be dispatched to the room where the body parts are to deliver the miracle. And he said, I'm telling you, God has a miracle for you. God has a spare parts room. You say, well, I know people who need a miracle. They may have even asked for one and they did not receive it. He says, I saw angels dispatched with the answered miracle from God, fighting principalities and powers only to be stopped by doubt and unbelief from the mouth of the petitioner. Such things as, it's not for me, it's not God's will that I be healed, is what I heard them say. Then the angel would sadly turn around and take the miracle back to heaven and deposit it in a room called Unclaimed Blessings. I know a young pastor who just started a new church in a very small town, and uh, there's a man that is a mutual friend of ours who lost his leg in a motorcycle accident, and I said to the pastor, I've been believing for his leg to grow back out. And the pastor said to me, and I suppose you have two or three credible uh, sources on that. And I said, yes, I do. So I gave him, first of all, this book by Gary Wood. And then I gave him a copy of this article by Rachel Tiefeteller. Of course, she's home with the Lord now. But she wrote in Billy Brim's Glory Watch magazine uh, in the year 2002. Let's listen. Years ago at a church in Texas, God said to me, Rachel, you will see creative miracles. At that time, if I were to put that out, people would have thought I was crazy. I didn't talk about it for years and years. He showed me arms where there were no arms. I saw those arms grow out. I saw legs where there were no legs. I saw leg, arms, eyes where there were no eyes. And so... One more source on that then is the Arthur Burt prophecy of 1934, which was later affirmed by prophet Bob Jones, talking about the end time harvest. It, the harvest, shall come as a breath, and the breath shall bring the wind, and the wind shall bring the rain, and there shall be floods and floods and floods, and torrents and torrents and torrents. Souls shall be saved like falling leaves from mighty oaks swept by a hurricane. Arms and legs shall come down from heaven, and there shall be no ebb. We close today's show with some really good news from Dr. David Cho of um, South Korea. He asked the Lord when he was in Seattle in 1933, Lord, have you forgotten America? The Lord told him to take out his atlas and point. He pointed to Pensacola, and then he heard the word of the Lord. Let's listen. The word of the Lord, I have not forgotten America. I will pour out my spirit first in Pensacola. It will burn like a match head. It will spread and go over to the river of the Holy Spirit, meaning the Mississippi River, it will go back up and go along the Gulf Coast a second time. It will go down the, Pens the peninsula of Florida. It will go up to the eastern seaboard, come across the Midwest, the Southwest, and shoot out to the Northwest. And before my coming, all America will be ablaze with the glory of God. The word of the Lord, all America will be ablaze with the glory of God. Stay tuned for some important messages, and we will be right back. Christians today are asking this question, what will be the signs of his coming? In this series, Teresa gives a detailed answer, including what is the significance of the upcoming four blood moons and four solar eclipses? 
Which Old Testament prophecies are currently being fulfilled? When is the next Shemitah year and what is its significance? What is meant by the spirit of Antichrist? And what biblical passages speak to the probability of a pre-tribulation rapture? All this and more in Teresa's series, What Will Be the Signs of His Coming? To order the series, What Will Be the Signs of His Coming? which includes an eight-part DVD series, the notebook with copies of the charts used on the screen, and Joyce Meyer's book, Filled with the Spirit, send $34 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291. We take Visa and MasterCard at 618-281-3291 or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. If you would also like a copy of Teresa's book from the Hidden Final Edition for only $12, $4 off the regular price, send $46 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Or call 618-281-3291. Or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. And thank you for including your tax-deductible donation when you order. September 11th, 1999. This day began the year that everything changed and the beginning of the final judgment of the nations. In this series, Timeline to the End of Time, Teresa walks through the end times and reveals the catastrophic naval attack on Damascus in the book of Jeremiah, the hook in the jaw that pulls the Russians into Israel, the war machine that Antichrist uses to unite Shia and Sunni Muslims. To order the eight-part DVD series, Timeline to the End of Time, for only $35, including the notebook with charts and timelines used on the screen, send $35 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236 or call 618-281-3291 or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. This series refers frequently to the book from the Hidden Final Edition. And if you're planning to use this series in your Bible school or cell group, it's recommended that you also purchase the book from the Hidden Final Edition on sale for $12. To order both the DVD series, Timeline to the End of Time, and the book from the Hidden Final Edition, send $47 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Or call 618-281-3291 or order online at Teresa Garcia Ministry. And thank you for including your tax-deductible donation when you order. Next week, we will discuss the final judgment of the nations and the peace treaty of Daniel 927. In the meantime, do pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and we will see you again next week. Thank you for watching Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. You may contact us at Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Or call 618-281-3291. Or visit us online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. You may also find us on Facebook and Roku at Teresa Garcia Ministry. For prayer requests, call 618-281-3291 or mail them to us at Teresa Garcia, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Be sure to join us again next week for Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia.